Hey, no more school, eh? So you can knack us. <gasps> Salty and nutter? What? Swearing? Show sure. up. Dang it. Look, just get on with it. No one can do us. We haven't left yet. I've always wanted to be on this stage. I've always wanted to come up here and say knackers. I bet you all have. Whenever Mrs Hudson comes on this stage to talk about corn dollies or being a good Samaritan or stand up year eight, sit down year nine, I think of that word. Because really, what she'd like to come up here and say is knackers school. She would. Look, are we doing this play or what? Hey, it's like when she gets you in her office all neat and smelling the perfume and she says, you don't come to school to mess around, to waste your time. We treat you like young adults and we expect you to behave accordingly. I don't think writing on the wall is a sensible thing to do. <laughs> That's good, Dad. Just like her, Salty. Yeah, but what she'd really like to say is, Oi, Salty, this graffiti, eh? Pack it in, it's getting right on my knackers. <laughs> what? Are we to start? Anyway, why do I care? No more school, no more stick, no more teachers thinking yeah. that you're thick. Hey. No more Miss Job shouting down the corridor like your death is supposed. Hey, you, Gail Saunders, how dare you belch in front of me? Hey, sorry, Miss. Didn't realise it was your turn. <laughs> hey, no more whole school assemblies, sitting on a cold sports hall floor, freezing your knackers off. Yeah, and no more cross country running and cold showers and towels that don't dry you. Yeah. And no more changing room scenes where you don't get change because you wear a vest and everybody else has got a bra on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and no more Mr. Thorne sending home letters saying I've missed games. <clears throat> we see each Nicky Barb in the golden spoon. <laughs> yeah, and no more sweaty geography teachers with bad breath and brill cream and ush puppies. And no more trendy art teachers saying hiya and call me Gordon. We haven't had an art teacher called Gordon. I know. No more running the 1,500 metres with an art condition. <sighs> no more. Because <laughs> today we're wagging it forever. Yes. Come on, let's start. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. Before we do start, I just want to say thank you to, uh, well, to Mr Harrison, oh. our drama teacher. Before he came here last September, us three didn't do nothing. Mm -hmm. Sod all. No. You got us into this, sir. He did. He's a good bloke, you know. Yeah. You are, sir. I know he's got another job at a better school, but... Fair play. Good luck to him. Yeah. Before he came here, teachers had given us up for dead. We were average. Lillian is average. She opens her book well and likes a warm room. <laughs> <laughs> Gail is stagnant to inert and fights when cornered. <laughs> average. Well, I don't feel average today. I feel top of the class, <laughs> thanks to Sir. I never thought to do anything like this. I only took drama for a sky. <laughs> Come on, let's start. Come on, Salty, let's go. Oh, right. Um, don't forget to keep in character, eh? Yeah. Oh, and hobby. Face the front, will yeah. you? I will do. And, and speak up. I will do! <laughs> a lot of what you're going to see was told to us by Mr Harrison. And even though you might not believe it, everything what happens in this play is based on the truth. Yeah, but the names and places have been changed. To protect the innocent. We're going to take you to a comprehensive school called Whitewall. It's somewhere in England. And they're waiting for a new teacher to arrive. That's right. Now there's 1,500 kids at Whitewall. And it's a special priority area. So it means it's got its fair share of problems. All we need you to do is use your imaginations. Because there's only a few of us. And us three have to play different characters. Oh, yeah. And narrators. <laughs> And narrators. So you've got to concentrate. So you've got to concentrate. Title. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's called Teachers. Line, 
there, Dickinson? I don't think it is. I know that that was the bell, Simon Patterson. The bell is a signal for me to move, and not for anyone else. Hello, um, I'm Mr Nixon, the new drama teacher. I was wondering where uh, Mrs Parry's office was. Yeah, it's in the new part of the school, up the stairs, first left. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> Doesn't look much like a drama teacher. No, he looks like somebody's come to mend the drains. I knew from my interview that Whitewall had a bad reputation and no drama facilities. But, like a sheriff with my new degree pinned to my chest, I bounded up to Mrs. Parry's office. She was busy with Mr. Basford, the deputy head. I can't believe you're doing this. I run it. I shall do what I like. After all the work that I've put into this society, I can't believe I'm not getting the part of Coco. <laughs> Great! It's a bloody liberty. Mr. Basford, I'm sorry. There's nothing more to be said. I need a younger person. I'm sure you'll have a great deal of fun in the chorus. In the chorus? I would be seen dead in the chorus. It's that or nothing. Right. Now, good day. I've got another appointment. <coughs> Mrs. Parry, or should I say Cordelia Parry, B A M F was an attractive woman. She carried herself very well, but she did have the most awful dress sense, and often wore pink with yellow. <laughs> Mr. Nixon, Jeff Nixon. That's right. Nice to see you again. Coffee. Thanks. Mrs. Parry's office was a cavern of theatre posters. I can see she certainly had more than a passing interest. Drama, Mr. Nixon. Bear boards and a passion. Wonderful. This is my all male production of the Trojan Women. <laughs> and that's me as Ophelia. On her wall was a picture of a much younger Mrs. Parry <laughs> in an amateur production of Hamlet. <clears throat> I'm doing the Mikado in the spring term, Mr. Nixon. I knew exactly what she meant. <laughs> I'm looking for a cocoa. Must be difficult. <laughs> of course, Mr. Basford usually takes the lead in our local GNS productions. <coughs> but I'm afraid it was rather tiresome last year in the Pirates. We're looking for some new blood. Well, that's given you something to think about, hasn't it? It certainly has. And so to business, Mr. Nixon. The meeting went on for another 20 minutes, but I got the general idea. Keep an eye off the teacher eating girls and the thuggish boys. They'll have you for breakfast. But the one thing that did strike him about Mrs. Parry is that she really did care about the kids. As we walked from my office, that is Mrs. Parry's office, I wish Jeff all the best in his probation year. And I took him towards Mr. Basford's room, home of the timetable. Here we are. The enormous timetable was blue tacked to the wall. It was so meticulous, so colourful. It was a work of art, like something in the Vatican. <laughs> a life's work. <coughs> the nomenclature is fairly straightforward. You, Mr. Nixon, will be NI, and drama will be DR. You'll be having your lessons in the main hall. So a drama lesson with you in the hall would read N-I-D-R-M-H. That means if you were taking a year seven class, it could read N-I-D-R-M-H, Y-7-X, period one. <laughs> Very simple. Elementary, Mrs. Parry. Now, Jeff, if you have any problems at all, don't hesitate. Come up and see me immediately. I'm always available. And uh, don't forget about the Mikado, will you? I know the theatre must be in your blood. This could be your big break. 
<laughs> so, I tentatively accepted a role in the chorus. And although Mrs. Parry was disappointed that I didn't want Coco, she said I'd certainly enjoy my time in Titty Poo. <laughs> Sir? Hmm? Sir, I'm lost. I can't work out my timetable. Look, I'm in tutor group ID, but I'm in teaching group high wi fi and I should be doing biology in block 31D with Mr. Cox, but Mr. Dean's in there with 6YY doing history, sir, and he says I should be in block 1. So I went there, sir, and when I went there, the classroom was empty, and once, sir, I've been walking around for 40 minutes, and I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> well, what have you got next? PE. Uh, in the gym. Do you know where that is? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> well, I suggest you go there and at least your class will find you. Right. Thanks, sir. Oh, uh, one more thing. Have you any idea where 9 IB is? Three tutors in as many weeks. Yeah, first there was that uh, Miss Bell. Well, she had a breakdown, but said she was pregnant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then there was a supply teacher who was always crying. Oh, and then there was Mr. Wilcox. Well, he was deaf, so you could say anything to him, so that was all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now they've sent us a new teacher, a brand new, sparkling clean, not even out the box new teacher. <laughs> <laughs> They're only here for two more terms. Send them the new guy, Nixon. He can cut his teeth on 11 YY in 9 IV. If they eat him or burn him alive, he'll be out the way. In 11 YY, there was me, Salty, Galen Obby, who you already know, and Kevin Mears, who spoke funny. <laughs> All right, Kevin. Yeah, thanks for that, Salty. I went to my mate Malcolm's, and he's got a new BMX, so we had a great game on Rallycross. <laughs> Kev was 15, going on three. Yeah. Then there was John Froggart, who never wore any decent shoes. Oh, Sally Renshaw. Uh, Vicky Marshall. Yeah. Walter Jones. Oh, fancy calling a kid Walter. Oh, and Trisha Forshaw. We've been through nearly every kid in the school, except me. <laughs> That's a lie. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Yeah, no, it's not. You asked Benny Good. Look, I wouldn't ask Benny Good what the time was. He's a loudmouth and a liar. Can we get on with it? And Trisha Forshaw, who was known, though it may not have been true, has been a bit of a goer. That's better. Yeah. <laughs> right. When you get a new teacher, it's like getting foster parents. When Nixon arrived, we were bored and disinterested. <sighs> Hi, is, uh, is this 9IB? Uh, I'm Mr Nixon. <coughs> oh, it's a bit uh, chilly in here, isn't it? Um, can, uh, can you two just come down from the bookshelves, please? I don't think that's made for sitting on, is it? Just, just come down, will you? And uh, if you two could stop playing table tennis, that would also be a help. Now, if, if everyone could sit on a chair instead of a desk. Right, uh, I'm Mr Nixon. <laughs> <laughs> the whole class burst into laughter. I couldn't see I'd said anything funny. I had a straightforward enough name and I didn't have two heads. I turned to the white uh, blackboard. <laughs> Alex is not spelt with an X. Oh, don't like him. Oh, come on. You've got to give him a chance. Why do you like him? No, but, well, look, we even gave Miss Bell a chance. Yeah, well, he's trying to be too smart. I don't like teachers who call you by your nickname. Yeah, but nobody calls you Lillian. Everybody calls you Robbie. Yeah, well, no reason why he should. He's new. Maureen with a scale two humanities 
as she pathetically tried to settle her class of 30. I said, be quiet. Look, if you're not going to be quiet, then I'll have to go and get Mr. Basford. I said, be quiet. Shh. Shh. <laughs> as I walked through the maze of a school, I saw and heard many different types of teaching. Look. like a menagerie. Nobody speaks in Mr. Basford's lessons. That's why I have the best maths results in the school. You can't work and talk. Nobody can. Not even me. And I'm a genius. <laughs> <laughs> Most classes had some sort of noise coming from them. Right, that's it. I'm going to go and get Mr. Basford. Mr. Basford's class worked in absolute silence, with absolute commitment. He also had the best kids. <laughs> Don't let the bastards grind you down. Hit them low and hard. Low and hard. Kids respect discipline. If they don't get it at home, then they get it in my lessons. Push down! I can hear somebody breathing. <laughs> <laughs> I was five minutes late for my first lesson. I'd taken a wrong turn at block one and ended up in the physics block. When I arrived, there was a group of year 11 non-exam drama students hanging around some stacked chairs in the main hall. Sixteen of them had managed to turn up. There were 25 names on the register. It just looked like some kind of youth club. I made my way purposefully to the stage. Oh, God, look, it's, it's him, that vixen. Oh, God, I've got him for tutor and drama. Well, what happened to Mrs. Ogle? Oh, God, she left. Are you need drama for Sky? Oh, yeah, that me. <gasps> it was either this or music. Hey. You got any facts? I wanted to do music, but they said I was too clumsy. Yeah, I've got two menfuls, my grannies. Oh, look, can I have one off you, a break? Uh, grab a chair, everyone. I say it in a friendly youth worker kind of tone. What's, what's he say? Just uh, get yourselves a chair. Look, we're not doing any work, are we, sir? Just uh, grab a chair, please. Look, I'll give you a bag of crisps if you give me a bag of break. Just get a chair, please, and make a half circle around the stage. How long have you been smoking? Four months. Well, why don't you buy some bastard bags then? <laughs> I will. Oh, yeah. I will tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Can you get a chair and stop waving it about? Yes, I know I said get a chair. I didn't mean swing it round your head. If I tab you and you don't give me any back, I'll drop you. Look, I said I will. Honest. Get a chair and sit on the bastard. <laughs> what did he say? You know? Everyone turn and face the front now. <laughs> Who does he think he is? Are you going to buy it or are you going to wag it? I didn't know, is she here? Yeah, the car's here. It's that red and... Yeah, right, well, uh, I'd go downtown then and get a milkshake. When everyone is ready. Good. Right. I think we'll start with one of the most important people in the world of uh, drama, Mr. William Shakespeare. Oh. <laughs> and in particular, a play you've probably already seen and don't even realise it. Romeo and Juliet. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which is a tragedy. Well, you know. Yeah, and, and it's the basis for West Side Story, and it's about two neighbours arguing. No, we've done it. We're Mrs. Hoggle. Oh. Yeah, yeah, and we've done the one about the two tramps. who are waiting for somebody to come oh. home and they never come. God, that was boring. Oh, and we've done the one, uh, Hamlet. Uh, it, it's about the prince who kills his uncle. Oh, yeah, and yeah. there's one about killers chasing somebody and one was a deaf and dumb waiter. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh. that's true. Hey, and we've done the Beverly Hills Club. 
one, yeah. and uh, Bloody Hill's got two. two. Yeah. East End uh, neighbours. East End neighbours. Hello, Offer. How are you doing, my darling? Yeah, we've done everything. What else? Yeah, the Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, <laughs> Harry Potter. Yeah, we've done everything there is in drama, sir. At that moment, Peter Saxon stood up. He must have been six foot seven, with tattoos up his arms and a line across his neck that said, cut here. <laughs> I want to say something, he said. I've got some drama to tell you. Go ahead, Peter, I said, not, one, not knowing what to expect. Sir, one day last year, sir, it was great. Me and Dazon, we decided to run away, to seek our fortune. We was going to London. It was a Tuesday. Oh no, it might have been Thursday. No, no, it was Tuesday, because we had technical drawing with Mr. Cooper. Mr. Cooper's soft, sir. You can swear at him and all sorts. Hey, we used to call him Gibbonhead, because he had a bald end and face like a gibbon. Anyway, me and Daz are in his class, and I throws a chair at him. So he goes and hides himself in the stockroom. So we get the key, we locks him in the stockroom. We get a chair, we're looking through the window in the top, and pointing at him and laughing and calling him Gibbonhead. Anyway, we wax it to the bus station. But sir, I couldn't stop laughing. That sight, Gibbonhead stuck in that room, just killed me off. So anyway, Orny says that we've got drama with Mrs. Huggle before lunch. So he goes back to school. We were doing different visions of hell. I was a cyclops and Orny was my mum. Oh, but we got in loads of trouble for that, sir. But we liked doing drama plays with Mrs. Hubble when she was here. Sir, as far as I know, Mr. Cooper's still locked in that stockroom. Oh, he's a liar! Very good, Peter. I could see they had raw potential. But I had to get them into plays. They were a funny bunch, but I liked them. And I think they liked me. White Wall was all right. Look, sir, sir, uh, can we do Wally? Hey, Wally, yeah. yeah. Wally! After my first month, I was starting to feel more confident. I also had my eye on Jackie Prime, PE mistress. Jackie Prime was tall, suntanned and bouncy. She was an expert in tennis and, and in uh, netball. And she was developing dance in the gym. She took a keen interest in all sports. Morning. Morning. <laughs> <laughs> How did uh, our first 11 get on? Oh, we lost. 67 nil. St George is in a different class. Well, and it didn't help that our captain, Oggy Moxon, he got sent off for spitting. Who's Oggy Moxon? Oh, well, he's the best player we've got, but a bit of a handful. I see. <laughs> uh, have you tried the uh, coffee yet? Tastes a bit like something that they brought back from a field trip. Coffee was 50p and forced down your neck by Madge the tea lady. See, we've got our own in the. We've got our own kettle in the gym. Pea stuff only. Morning. Morning, Morning Mrs. Mrs. Perry. Morning, Mr. Nixon. I hope you're still thinking about the Mikado. I wouldn't want your mind wandering onto other things. <laughs> um, no, of. of of course, uh, Mrs. Parry, I, I'll be at rehearsal. Wonderful, Mr. Nixon, wonderful. Did you know that White Wall has a farm? Well, I wouldn't call it a farm. We've got a pig. <laughs> My dear Miss Prime, we have a number of pigs. Yes, and one of them's an old sow. <laughs> <laughs> and geese. Two geese. I was doing duty behind the canteen when I was attacked by the geese. <laughs> but I'd also learned how to stay away from the smokers, to avoid them, just look the other way. 
Look, I've got to go. I've got bars. <coughs> uh, if you want to catch the smokers, it's pretty obvious where they're going to hang out. Uh, but if I were you, I wouldn't go behind the sports hall. Why is that? Oggy Moxon's patch. Well, everyone gives him a wide berth. And with that, she was off. She was a breath of fresh air. A bubble in an otherwise flat brew. Oh, God. I was becoming obsessed with Jackie Prime. But Jackie Prime didn't think anything of Nixon at all. To her, he was just another teacher, and she was just being sociable. Uh, you can't sit there, that's Marcus's seat. Oh, right. Uh, mm. You can't sit there, that's Frank Collier's. Couldn't uh, sneak a cheek on the edge of the air, could I, Mavis? Sorry, Jeff, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, is this paper in I see it. He's on the loo. After seven weeks, finding a regular seat in the staff room was still a nightmare. According to Mr. Dean, most of the new staff preferred to stand out in the rain. <laughs> Mr. Sawyer had been at Whitewall for two years and had never had a regular seat in the staff room. I, I don't believe this! Can you see this timetable? It's Lassford! He's got bananas! Oh, I longed to be down in the gym, drinking tea with Jackie Prime. But it was a forlorn fantasy. <laughs> He's only gone and given me big efforts for medial Englishmen. I, I hate that group. I, I, I do. I hate that group. What's the matter, Maureen? But they hate me. He knows they do. I know what you mean. <laughs> I've just had Vicky Forshaw. And if she says, I'm bored, miss. One more time, I'll wring a soddy neck. <laughs> he just doesn't care. He doesn't care. Do you know what she just said? We're studying the digestive system. She said, this, the esophagus is one long tube running from mouth to anus. I said, that's good, that's good, that, Trisha. How did you even find that out? She said, well, when I went to the dentist, miss, he looked in my mouth. I could tell I've got diarrhoea. <laughs> I said, pyarrhoea, girl. Pyarrhoea, bleeding gums. You know what I'm a really do. Me get for trophenia. I've got a doctor, and he gives me the medial English. There was another big fight at break time. See, <laughs> sod. <laughs> was Bobby Moxon, known to all and sundry as uh, Oggy Moxon. Yeah. Well, everybody knew he was dangerous. He was 15, going on 25. Rumour had it he lost his virginity at 10, and that Jackie Prime <laughs> fancied the pants off him. Now, when Oggy said shit, you did. <laughs> <laughs> and when he said it was Wednesday, it was Wednesday. <laughs> well, anyway, one Wednesday, I'm standing outside the mobile classrooms. Mr. Dean had chucked me out of history because I said that Peter the Great was a stroppy get. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm standing outside the mobiles with a mood on when Oggy comes past. All right, Gail. <laughs> yeah, I knew he fancied me. What are you doing? Waiting for Christmas. What's it look like? I've been a party at my dad's pub on Saturday. You want to come? Most of year 11 are coming. Should be a good night. Might come then. Might see you there then. Yeah, might. <laughs> Wear something easy to get off. Your love might be. Can <laughs> 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 I eat him? Oh, I do. Somebody ought to drop them. Yeah, who? No. All the staff shit themselves and they've got him to teach. <sighs> a speech. By Oggy Moxon about being hard. Ah, <coughs> 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 oh, Moggy Moxon. Look, I did say.
say you have to use your imagination. <laughs> I'm Oggy Moxon. I'm hard as nails, as toe cap boots, as concrete on your head, as marble in a church, as calculus is hard, as learning Hebrew is hard, then so am I. And even Basford knows I'm a rock. His cane wilts like an old sock. Yeah. Look, and if any of these teachers in this tin pot school lay a finger on me, God be my judge, I'll have their eyes. And if not me, then I'll not be up this knowledge college in a flash. Yeah. Look, all the female flat flesh fancy me. Yeah. From big Miss Grimes to pear Miss Prime. I see how their eyes flick to my flies, cause I'm hard all the time. <laughs> yeah. Last Christmas dance, me and Jackie Prime were dancing to some sort of a shit pot song. And my hand went down her back and she said, I was great. <laughs> I heard her sigh for me. And as I walk through these corridors of books and boredom for the last two terms, I see grown men flinch in fear. In, in cookery class, I got some sort of a sticky paste on my hands. And in haste, I asked pretty Miss Bella if she wouldn't mind getting an anky out of my pockets. Of course she would. A teacher in her first two terms of school, only uh, my pockets had holes in. And I wasn't wearing any underpants. Oh. <laughs> So be warned, when Oggy Moxon's about, get out your bags and lock up your daughters. <laughs> <laughs>
I believe he took a group of 15 year olds to see a play about transvestites from Transylvania. I can only imagine the educational value in that. A black mark from Massford. Mrs. Parry had failed to mention the joys of doing cover. Usually, a pupil would appear like the ghost of Caesar with a pink slip in their hand, which would tell you where to go and who to cover for. Mr. Bassford was in charge of the cover rotor. Nixon and I to cover for Fisher, FI. Year 11 games. And the best of luck. Right, all you third year dead legs, shut up, said Miss Jackie Prime. Look, if you want to watch uh, Euro 96 on DVD, go into the lecture hall with Mr. Clark. And those of you that want to play pirates in the gym, uh, get changed. And you, without the kit, better go and see Mr. Nixon. A whole line of kids wearing anoraks came forward. Mr. Nixon looked staggered, been left to deal with P.E.'s cast-offs. And amongst the throng was the legendary Barry Wopshaw. Barry Wopshaw never did sports. He hated games. Yeah, Barry was 15, but like an old man, he lived with his granddad, so he had the wisdom of someone four times his age. Now every day, for the last two years, he'd worked on a milk round. Where's your kit? Uh, me sure stone for me, sir. What about you? Uh, well, we don't put the shorts in the washing uh, the wash machine or chew them up, so I can't really wear them, sir, so I've got no kit. Oh, yeah? Yeah, no, sir, no, it's done, yes. <laughs> what about you, Barry Wobshaw? Have you got any kit? Sir? He never has any kit, sir, he never, ever does. I wasn't asking you, was I, Simon Patterson? No, sir. What about a note, Barry? Have you got a note? <laughs> Sir? Well, let's have it then. Barry passed him a crumpled piece of paper. He locked in innocence as Mr. Nixon read it. Please leave four pints and a yoghurt this Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, it's the only note I could get, sir. <laughs> I tried to get Barry Wobshaw to change his options. Humour like that would be dynamite in a drama class. But he wouldn't change. He said he preferred doing geography. It was peaceful and he liked copying maps. <laughs> On October the 13th, Jackie Prime was at St George's for a GCSE meeting. She was walking around the quadrant. A choir was singing. <sighs> Beautiful. Yes, there's been. It's like another world. I hear they're becoming an academy. Oh, it's more than like it. I mean, they've got fantastic facilities. Dance studio, digital editing suite. <sighs> Mr. Basford's kids come here. Well, you seem surprised. And then Miss Prime was off into St. George's Sports Hall. It was fantastic. <laughs> there was something reassuring about St George's that made you want to teach there. Something soothing and academic. The same I was beginning to think could not be said about Whitewall. <laughs> One of your dad's then. Oh, where'd you get it? I pinched it. Oggy had stolen one of his dad's phone and porn downloaded on. For a quid, year nines could have a look. For two quid, year sevens could have a glance. Oh. It was <coughs> break time, and Oggy and Dennis were sharing a couple of fags and looking through da uh, Oggy's dad's phone. Oh, oh, oh. Do it, do it. <laughs> What are you up to, lads? Nothing. Are you obviously up to something? No, we're not. Are you smoking? No. What if we were? It'll stunt your growth. So what? What have you got there? 
A phone? I can see it's a phone. Well, it's my dad's phone, so if I was you, I'd leave that with us. Well, maybe I'll have to report you then. Could you do that then? Well, you know what that means, don't you? Yeah, I'll get kicked out of school. Great, I don't want to be here anyway. By this time, a large group had formed. Various voices could be heard shouting. Come on, Oggy, smack him one. He's only a drama teacher. <laughs> Perhaps I need to take you to Mr. Bastard. Oh, he's not going to do anything. Oh, really? Oh, really? We'll see about that. Okay. Perhaps I'll have to deal with you myself. Oh, what are you going to do? <laughs> Pretend I'm a tree? <laughs> I'm going to report you. That's tough of you, eh? Why don't you take me on now then, sir? Just you and me. I'm going to have to report you. You do that then. I uh, turned and walked away. Yeah, I... With kids jeering and shouting in the background. Yeah. And very faintly, I heard Oggy Moxon say, You wanker! <laughs> it was my first horrific confrontation, and I'd played it all wrong. I couldn't handle Oggy, Oggy Moxon. And if I couldn't, who I thought was fairly streetwise, what chance did poor Miss Grimes or Julie Sharp have? Well, those nice supply teachers that never had a bad word to say for anyone. As Nixon went off to report on him, he began to think of getting out of teaching. He began to wish his NQT year away. I wasn't talking to you, I was talking to Paul Druitt. Now will everyone hush down? Right, I'm not going to say it again. Well, nobody's going home until everyone is quiet. Bell's gone, sir. I know the bell has gone, Simon Patterson, and I don't care. We can wait all night. In September, I started a drama club in the main hall from four o'clock. Gail, Salty and Hobby were regulars. We did all sorts of work, but it didn't exactly meet with the approval of uh, Jeff, the caretaker. I can't it's done. Round. Go on, Nicole. Let's be happy, you? It's time to go find a place somewhere else. Come on. It's half past five. I thought you'd offer the drone spirits of goodwill. Just uh, give us five minutes, will you, Doug? I can't, Mr. Nixon. Mrs. Parry's got rehearsal room for my car that we need tonight. And then there's the mole bars because there's a night class on in there. And the sports saw because five sides on. And someone's gone crackers in the sixth form book. Just, just give us a few minutes. A few more minutes? Bloody hell, where would I be if I gave everyone a few more minutes? All right, don't be such an ogre. I'm not. I'm asking you to leave, that's yeah, all. But it's the manner of it. Look, I've got to get this floor buffered. That's all I'm bothered about. So it's taken me ages to get them into this. Do us a favour, just give us 20 minutes. I can't, Mr. Nixon. We're short staffed. I've got three cleaners gone home, and our gym's gone off with a bad back. I'm only doing my job. Yeah, well, I'm only trying to do mine. Look, you don't get paid for this. Why don't you get yourself off home? You wouldn't get a bastard out of his office. Look, doing it in the old's a bloody disgrace anyway. Sometimes I can't get a shine on this floor, and then I have to polish it. And that's a right bloody job. If you can tell me, Doug, where there's a morsel of space for me to do drama, then I'll happily go there instead. Well, is there any? Well, it's not worth bloody doing. I've got the main hall, and that's it. Well, if you ask me, they should take it off the bloody timetable. I mean, it's not like they do any writing or anything, is it? Just running around making lots of noise. You silly old sod, you don't even know what you're talking about. Hey, <laughs> that's swearing, that is. I don't get paid to be bloody swore at! Nobody swears at me! Just you wait till I see Bassford! Now, the funk soul brother, check it out now! The funk soul brother, right about now! The funk soul brother, check it out now! The funk soul brother, right about now! The funk soul brother, check it out now! Funk 
Thursday, November the 9th. One of my biggest fears was that I was teaching the wrong book at GCSE. For the past 10 weeks, I've been doing Twelfth Night when I heard a rumour on the grapevine it was the winter's tale. <laughs> Mr. Basford put me right on that. He also put me right on a few other things. You've had a running with uh, Doug, Jeff. Don't upset the caretakers. They do a grand job. Oh, I suppose we're all trapped in the same system, aren't we? Caretakers, staff, kids. How are your lads doing at St George's? Oh, fine, fine. You live down that way? No, I live down Green Acre Parade. That's in this school's catchment area. Yes, that's right. So how come they don't come here? Look, St George's get people into Oxford. 80% get A star to C there. Only 22% get that here at Whitehall. Parents have the right to choose schools, and I'm choosing. But Whitewall's, uh, St. George's is ten miles away. It must cost you a fortune. Look, I'm making sure my children get the best possible education. Oh, and you can afford it, I suppose. What about kids like Gail Saunders? Can their parents afford to pay for them to travel to a school? No. Can't even afford a school trip. So what? I shall make my children disadvantaged just because others are. Wake well, you up, know, Jeff. Parents have the right to send their children to the school of their choice. And kids have the right to a decent education, whether their parents have the ability or willingness to pay for it. You know as well as I do, parents don't hold that, don't hold education that great deal of importance. It doesn't mean we ditch their kids. Wake well, you know, up, Jeff. What we want for your family when you have kids? Let's take drama, shall we? Do you want them to do it in a, a drafty old school hall where all the books are sellotaped up together? Or would you rather they did it in a state-of-the-art facility where they wanted for nothing? You just think about what you really want, Mr. Nixon. But that's not the point. Surely all schools should be the same, have the same facilities, the same money, money readily available. Should we want the best for our kids, all of them? Not just those that can afford to pay, <coughs> their parents can afford to pay for them to go to a school, whether it's fees or bus fare. Kids have a right to be educated to their potential. And that's the system that we have now. A grade A kid is a grade A potential. Well, that's bollocks and you know it. Don't talk to me like that, Mr Nixon! And don't talk to me like that, you bloody fascist! <laughs> I knew what you were the moment I saw you! What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the Mercado! <laughs> what about it? Eight years I've been in that society! <laughs> and he still got me. Look, you, you've had it now, said Maureen with a, as she thumbed through the times there as she was listening in. Look, nobody calls Basford a fascist and gets away with it. He'll make your life a misery. He'll have you uncovered from now until eternity. Look, he's dangerous. And he does a lot for the school. And they're his kids. He can do what he likes. I felt like maybe I'd got it wrong. Maybe we shouldn't have a fair system. Maybe we should let the bright kids be bright and leave the less able, treat them like rhubarb. Keep them in the dark and shit on them. <laughs> and everywhere I looked, I could see the difference between dog piss in Hobby's grandma's garden and garden parties and degrees at St George's. And truth was, it was garden parties I wanted. White wall was killing me, sapping me, frustrating me, wearing me down. By Christmas, I was heading into a deep depression. 200 year seven reports to do, GCSE marking, and with Christmas carol concerts I couldn't even get in the hall to teach. Hey Jeff, have you seen? There's a job going at St George's. Scale to drama. Digital editing please. <laughs> I'm not really into that. Oh, don't be so silly, Jeff. Don't say you're 
thinking of staying. Cool bits they call this place in the county hall. Everybody's trying to get out. <laughs> when you see a gap in the fence, you've got to go for it. Look, I've got an interview for local radio. Look, here. I'll leave it with you. Mr. Nixon. Sir. Can I go to the medical room? Sir. Um, can uh, you just come away from the gas taps, please? Sir. She said, make no, I haven't. Find a space. No, uh, sir, when are we back in the hall? Just, just find a space. Hey, uh, sir, are we doing properly with the cook? Find a space. Oh, are we doing Billy Liar? Yes, can I go to the medical room? Oh, sir, she's mixed me pen. No, I haven't. Yes, she has, sir. No, I haven't. Sir, she's mixed me book. No, I 